Hey Freedom Forgers, it's Patriot Gal, and today we're going to learn how to vacuum seal some fish. So come along with us, and let's get going. Hey Freedom Forgers, it's Patriot Gal here. Hey, today we are processing some nice bass fillets. Uh, me and the Patriot guy just got back from Lake Powell, which is a lake that borders Arizona and Utah. It shares a border. And uh, we had a very successful fishing trip. And so I'm going to show you how we go about um, processing these fillets when we get home. In a previous video, we showed you how we actually do the filleting itself. And uh, we showed you that on a walleye. Now I'm going to show you what we do when we get home after we rinse them again. And um, how I do the finishing touch to them before I freeze them. And also how I vacuum seal them. So uh, let me just find you a good fillet here. These are all smallmouth bass fillets. Nice thing about Lake Powell is it has a very high limit on the smallmouth bass that you can keep. And also a nice high limit on the walleye and the striped bass so they are trying to do some management techniques on the lake to improve the fishery so yeah, that was our benefit so here is your typical um, size that you would catch uh, so there's your typical fillet and to finish these off uh, what i've done is i've taken the skin off we left the skin on these but when you get home um, there are some additional bones that run right here in the center of the fillet and I like to take those out before we freeze them because nobody likes to get a bone when they're eating a fillet. Let me just insert a note here. These bones can also poke holes through your bag, which will release the vacuum, and then you can get some freezer burning. So you don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that, and I'm just going to feel with my finger to where I can feel the last bone, which is basically right in the center of the fillet. It's right here. And so I'm just going to take my bony knife and carefully, almost surgically, just cut a little line of meat and that bone section out. So you can see the cut that I made right there. The bones are on this side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to take that little piece of meat out. And no bones. The bones are all in here. That little piece of meat will go to in the chicken bucket and we'll throw that in there. So now you've got this nice, completely boneless bass fillet. And so what we're going to do now, I don't like to leave them this size. Um, it's a little awkward to eat when it's that big. And um, also it's a little hard to manage them in the fryer. So you can see from the filleting process, it already kind of has an angle right here. So what I like to do is I like to cut it on an angle here uh, and so I'll end up with two pieces so we're going to go ahead and make that cut now and so that's just a lot easier to bread that size and to manage it in the fryer so we're going to go ahead and do a few of these quickly feel for the bone run the knife down the center and just cut that little strip out and with practice you can get quite proficient at that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these done and then I'm going to show you how we go ahead and process those, process those in the vacuum sealer. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is it really helps to have a great bony knife. This is a bony knife um, made by J. A. Henkel or Henkel. I'm not sure how, how you, it's pronounced. Uh, I will put a link in the notes to where you can get one of these for yourself. Um, it is a little bit pricey, but I believe in paying um, good money for good tools. And it just makes the job so much simpler, especially if you've got several of these to do and if you fish a lot like we do. So I'll be back in a second after I get these all done and we'll show you how to package them up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to feel with my finger to where I can feel the last bone, which is basically right in the center of the fillet. It's right here. And so I'm just going to take my bony knife and carefully, almost surgically, 
just cut a little line of meat and that bone section out. So you can see the cut that I made right there. The bones are on this side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to take that little piece of meat out. And no bones. The bones are all in here. That little piece of meat will go to in the chicken bucket. And we'll throw that in there. So now you've got this nice, completely boneless bass fillet. And so what we're going to do now, I don't like to leave them this size. Um, it's a little awkward to eat when it's that big. And um, also it's a little hard to manage them in the fryer. So you can see from the filleting process, it already kind of has an angle right here. So what I like to do is I like to cut it on an angle here. Excuse me. Yeah, an angle here. Uh, and so I'll end up with two pieces. So we're going to go ahead and make that cut now. And so that's just a lot easier to bread that size and to manage it in the fryer. So we're going to go ahead and do a few of these quickly. Feel for the bone. Run the knife down the center. And just cut that little strip out. And with practice you can get quite proficient at that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these done, and then I'm going to show you how we go ahead and process those, process those in the vacuum sealer. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is it really helps to have a great boning knife. This is a boning knife um, made by J. Henkel or Henkel. I'm not sure how, how you, it's pronounced. Uh, I will put a link in the notes to where you can get one of these for yourself. Um, it is a little bit pricey, but I believe in paying um, good money for good tools. And it just makes the job so much simpler, especially if you've got several of these to do and if you fish a lot like we do. So I'll be back in a second after I get these all done and we'll show you how to package them up. Okay guys, we're back and um, you can see that I've got the nice fillets all done here. I've got the little pieces with the bones in here. Those will go in the chicken bucket. And uh, what you're going to do now is we've determined that we like about uh, five each of these fillets, these fillet pieces. And so what we're going to do is package these in fillet pieces, ten to a package. I've already determined the size of the bag I need, and I'll show you how uh, I do that. I use this pan turned just, uh, you know, a little um, metal pan. It's turned upside down. It's almost the same height as the edge of my vacuum sealer here. That really helps you to manage um, your fish and to manage the package to make sure that you get a good seal and it's not wrinkled. And um, I, you know, I learned this technique when I was up in Alaska. Me and the husband worked at a lodge in Alaska for uh, a summer. And uh, one of my jobs was to package all of the fish for the guests that came and fished at this lodge. So I got really a lot of hands-on time with the vacuum sealer and learned a few tricks. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my bag out. Now I buy these bags. Uh, I don't buy the, the vacuum, uh, what is this thing? It's a uh, food saver. Yeah, so I don't buy the food saver bags anymore. I buy these at Walmart. Um, and um, they have their own brand. I think it's called Home Something or Other. Anyway, you can find it. And honestly, it's in the weirdest place at Walmart. It's over by the vacuums and the uh, some of the kitchen stuff, but it's it's not where the Ziploc bags are. I can tell you that. So anyway, so I'm gonna pull these bags out, and I I've, I've determined that if I pull it to the center of this pan, that's the perfect size to accommodate the amount of fillets that I want to do. So there's the size right there. And so you'll just have to play with it for the size you need for your family. But my advice is to figure out a way to measure, um, get one bag that is the size that you want and then make a bunch of them that are the same size. Now, I am just gonna seal one edge of that. We'll do that quickly. And there we go. Go ahead and put 10 of these pieces in there. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
and 10. Give it a bounce to settle everything in the bottom. Try to pull this out as smooth as you can. And you'll find that these bags curve a certain way from being coiled up on the cardboard tube. I always like to put the curved part down. It just helps you um, manage the bag. And I just barely put the edge of the bag in that vacuum chamber. Not all the way down, just over the edge there. I smooth that out, try to get all the wrinkles out, hold it steady, put the top down, latch it down, put it on the moist setting, and hit the button. Just wait for your light to go off. Now this is the model V2420. I don't know if they make this model anymore, but they're all pretty similar. And there you go. A nice package of bass fillets for me and the Patriot guy. And you can see that I have no wrinkles in my uh, seal at all, which is important to keep the integrity of that seal. Now, if I were to have a wrinkle, I would simply do this. I would simply reseal the bag without the vacuum setting on this margin right here. So I'll just show you that. So I would just Put the bag over the ceiling area, not in the vacuum chamber, lock it down, put an extra seal on it, and there'll be just a little extra insurance that I'm not going to have any uh, air leak into my bag and create any freezer burn. So what that would look like is it would just look like that. So you just got a double seal there. So that's what we're up to. Uh, I've got some great footage of our trip down there um, so that you guys can see some of the scenery. If you live east of the Mississippi, you might never get out this way. And it's some beautiful desert country down there. So I'll get that up so you guys can see it. Probably it'll be up before this video will. But if not, look for that. And there you go. That's how I do it. I'll just take a Sharpie and write on there. So just another thing to put in the freezer. Meat that we didn't have to uh, uh, buy that's got no chemicals in it, it's not farm raised, it's natural wild meat. So anyway guys, I sure enjoy you guys uh, checking us out and uh, interacting with you guys on the comments. And if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and um, if you know somebody who you think would enjoy this video, make sure you share it with them on your social media. And uh, until next time, make sure you guys do something today to forge your freedom. Have a super day. Bye-bye. Hey guys, don't leave just yet. I've got a couple other videos for you to watch. And when you get done watching them, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the Gold Eagle badge right there on the screen. If you want to connect with the Forging Freedom Tribe, which is our Facebook group, there's a link in the show notes. So come on over and hang out with us. Thanks for watching our channel. And remember to go out today and do something to forge your freedom. See you soon.